If you are in programming world, for quite a while, you must have seen different sites, which provides multi-language online IDE. In these IDE, you can select any specific language, to write and run your program. In this video, we are going to develop, one such online IDE, from scratch. So, without any more delay, let's start. To develop the online IDE, we are going to use simple HTML, CSS and jQuery for UI side logic implementation and design. In the server side, we are going to use PHP. Once you will understand the concept, if you wish, you can use any other server side language like Java, Python, Node.js or anything else. In this video, inside our online IDE, we are going to accommodate five different languages. C C++, Node.js, Python, and PHP. At the end of this video, you will be able to extend the IDE to accommodate different other programming languages as well. So, that's all about the technologies and features we are going to use and implement. Let's start the coding now. As PHP will be our server-side language, so I am going to use WAMP Server for this application. As you can see, WAMP Server is installed and running in my local system. Now, we need to create our project inside www folder of WAMP server. Right? So, let's open PHP Storm and create a new project. Let's put the path here. And also provide the project name as IDE. Let's create the project. As you can see, the IDE project is created inside PHP Storm. Let's create two directories inside the project. First one is UI, where we will keep all the HTML CSS and JavaScript files. And another folder is app, where we are going to keep our PHP script. Inside UI folder, let's create a HTML file, IDE.html. The basic HTML file template is generated here. Now, we will create two more directories inside UI folder. First one is CSS, for style sheets. And another one is JS, for JavaScript files. We will now create style.css inside CSS folder and ide.js inside JS folder. Also, let's create a PHP file, compiler.php inside app folder. Okay, so we are done with our project's file structure. Let's start coding from the ide.html file. Let's first change the title of the HTML page. Let's put it as codeboard online IDE. In the body, we will keep five different divs. At the top, we will have the div with class header. Let's put the header text codeboard online IDE. Then we will have control panel. After that, I will keep the editor. In the editor, we will write our code. Below the editor, there will be two sections. First one is button container. And the last one is the output div. The output div will display the program's output. In the control panel div, we will keep the functionality to select a language. We will add a drop-down list for all the different languages. Let's provide the ID and the class of the drop-down as languages. Let's add change handler method as well for the drop-down. As I mentioned earlier, Primarily we are going to add support for C, C++, PHP, Python, and Node.js. So, let's add these five languages inside the drop-down list. Now, let's add ID of the editor div as editor. Inside the button container, we will add one button for running the program. Let's add one click handler in the button. That's all about our HTML structure. Now we will include the IDE.js file. Also, let's add the CSS file style.css. For the code editor, we will use a library for basic support of syntax highlighting and error detection. For that, we will use a CE editor. This library is very tiny in size and also extremely easy to use. It supports different languages. In its official site, there is a guide for embedding the library. 
We can use CDN as well, to use the library. But for this project, we will download, the pre-built version of the library, from its official GitHub repository. I will mention the official site URL, and GitHub link, in the video description. Inside the downloaded zip, we can use, any of the pre-built versions. Source, or the minified source. Let's copy all the JavaScript files from inside source folder. Then go to inside the JS folder of our project. Let's create a new directory, lib, and paste all the JS files inside lib. Now if we go to PHP Storm, we will be able to see the lib folder. Inside the lib folder, we have all different JS files. These files are responsible for supporting different languages and themes in the editor. Let me add the ace.js library in our ide.html file. We will also use dark theme for our editor. So let's include monokai theme as well. Finally, let's search for jQuery CDN. And include that in our file. Now, if I go to the browser, and open the URL, localhost, slash IDE, slash UI, slash IDE.html, we will be able to see the HTML page. It's looking ugly, because we have not added any styling yet. Let's go back to, PHP Storm, and in the style.css file, let's add few styling quickly. I am going to add, very simple styling here. So, I am not going to explain line by line CSS codes. But don't worry about the CSS coding, because I will publish the project in a GitHub repository, and I will add the repository link in the video description. You can check the CSS codes from the repository, or if you have any doubt, please mention in the comment section. Okay, I am done with the CSS coding. Now, if I refresh the browser link, you will be able to see the colorful page. but the editor is still not showing up. For that, let's go back to our coding and we need to configure the ACE editor and IDE.js file. Let's first define a variable named editor. Now inside window.onload function, we will configure our editor. To initialize the ACE editor, ACE.edit, and then pass the argument as the ID of the div where we want to keep our editor. For us, that is editor, correct? Now, we will set the monokai theme, using editor.setTheme. Finally, as our default language is set as C, in dropdown, so let me set the editor's default mode as, C underscore CPP. That's it for now. Let's save the file. And refresh the browser. And, bingo! Our editor is showing up now. Our next step is, to configure our editor mode, whenever language selection will be changed, from the drop-down. So, let's go back to the coding again. Now, if we go to our HTML file, you can see, we have added a change handler, on the language drop-down. We have to define, the change language method, in IDE.js file. So, let's write a function, change language. We will receive, the value of the drop-down in language variable. Now, if language is C or C++, let's set the mode of the editor as C underscore CPP. If language is PHP, we need to set the mode as PHP. Similarly, for Python and Node, we will set the mode of the editor as Python and JavaScript. So, that's the simple coding for configuring the editor, based on selected language. Let's go to the browser and refresh the page. Now, if I write a simple C program, you will see that, the keywords of the program, is being highlighted. Now, if I change the language to PHP, you will notice, that the highlighted colors are gone. Because, these are not valid PHP syntax. Right? Now, if I write a single line of PHP code, the colors are back again. Also, the IDE is alerting us, for the basic syntax errors. Let's check the same for, Python, and Node.js as well.
Okay, the IDE is working as expected. Now, when we will click on the run button, the code should execute and provide us the output. For compiling or executing program, we have to send the code to the server side PHP script. Let's go back to our project again. On the run button, we have a click handler function, execute code. Let's define the execute code method in IDE.js file. Inside the method, we will make an Ajax call to communicate with compiler.php file. So, let's provide URL slash IDE slash app slash compiler.php. The HTTP method will be post. Now, we need to send two data items, language and code. We will pick the language value from the dropdown. And we will get the code using editor.getSession.getValue. And finally, in the success callback function, we will receive the response and show the response in output diff. Now, we will develop the compiler.php file. Before starting to write code for compiler.php, let's create a folder, temp, under app directory. In our PHP file, first we will receive the post parameters using dollar underscore post. After that, let's create a random string using mt underscore rand. Now we will create a new file with a random name inside the temp folder. And we will keep the file extension same as the selected language. Now we will write the code inside that file. And then close it. So, as of now, the expectation is, whenever we will write some program, in the IDE, and click on run button the program will be saved to a file, under temp directory. Let's test it. Let me write a simple C program. Now, let's run it. So, if we check the temp directory, we will be able to see the file, containing our program. So, our program file is being saved, as expected. Now, we will compile or execute it. Before going into that final stage, let me request you all, please subscribe to Channel Code Board Club. Your like, comments, and subscription motivate me to create many such interesting videos for all of you. So, for compiling or executing the programs, your local system or the server where compiler.php file resides should have the compilers or the interpreters installed for each of the languages. In my local system, I have all these installed. This is my PHP interpreter. Then I have installed GCC for C compiler and G++ for C++ compiler. Also, I have Node and Python installed in my system. Now, let's copy the path of PHP installation location. Let's go back to our coding. We will write code to execute PHP programming first. If language equals to PHP, output equals to shell underscore exec and then pass the command to run a PHP program as an argument. The command will be PHP execution path slash php.exe. Then the program file name. This final section is to get the result in the output variable. After that, just echo dollar output. That's it. Let's test it now. Let me select language as PHP. I will write a very simple PHP program. Let's run it. Bingo. That's our output. Let's write some loop here in PHP. And again, that's our correct result. So it's working as expected. Now we will proceed for the other languages as well. We have to write the similar code for Python. But this time, we need to provide the path of Python executable. REST will be same as PHP. Next, we will proceed for Node.js. For Node.js, one extra step will be required. That is, we have to rename the file to add .js extension. We will use rename function of PHP to add .js extension along with file name. Now, in shell underscore exec function, we can only use node, instead of full node executable path, because node executable location is added, in my path variable. This can be done, for PHP and Python as well. REST will be same as above languages. 
Let's test it, for these three languages. Let's select Python. And, write a simple program. It's working. Correct? Now, let's select Node.js. Write a single line code, console.log, hello Node.js. That's working perfect. Now, if we select Python, and run the same code, we will get the error. Because, this is not a valid Python code. Right? Let's proceed for C and C++ now. For C and C++, the steps will be a bit different. Because, we first have to compile the program, to create an executable file. And then, we have to run the executable file, to get the output. So, first define a variable, containing the executable file name. Then, we will compile the program, using the command, gcc, program file name, hyphen o, executable file name. After that, we will run the executable file, using another shell underscore exec method, to get the output. For C++, everything will be similar. The only difference will be, we will use G++, instead of GCC. That's it, from coding. Let's test now. Let me write a C program quickly. And, if I run it, I'm getting expected output. Now, let's test C++. So, C++ program also, compiling and executing properly. Now, our online IDE has five different languages support. Right? But we still have few drawbacks. Right now, we cannot take input from user. Also, if user writes some vulnerable code, that will corrupt the server operating system. There is no security in place, to prevent all these, for now. Please mention in the comments section, if you want me to create another video, to fix these issues. That's it for today. Please don't forget to provide your feedback, and like. Bye for now.